My name is Katrina Borsato. Of course, we're joined by our resident chef, Michele Ushi, and we're going to be spending the next couple of weeks on Tuscany, La Toscana, Michele. Yeah, now, whereabouts is La Toscana in Italy? Which is on the Tyrrhenian Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, he's probably he's facing uh, Sardinia, what we actually where we were we just last left. week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's in the center of Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the capital is Firenze. Is Firenze, mm -hmm. which actually which actually was Florence, uh, for our viewers at home. Florence. Very mm. popular for the very touristy. Very touristy. And uh, La Toscana, in fact, is bordered at the very north of uh, La Toscana. I think you'll find Liguria. And I know there is some Ligurian uh, influences in the food. Um, yeah. And then you're sort of bordered by Umbria, Emilia Romagna, yeah, Lazio. Uh, Lazio. So I suppose uh, we, we, we talk, there's, there's Rome in there. Yeah. There's, um, you know, Perugia, that area. So we've got some exciting things we can talk about. Yeah. And uh, w what I was going to say is actually that Florence was the first. Uh, town to be capital of Italy after the unification of oh, Italy. Oh, really? Because when they actually moved from, uh, from Torino and moved, uh, actually moved to Firenze, Firenze just for a couple of years. Oh, okay. And, um, and pretty amazing sort of influences because it really was the centre of the Ro Holy Roman Empire, is that yeah, right? Yeah, there, there was that too. So lots of monasteries and, and monks. I just remember something in the history there which uh, obviously left a lot of influences in terms of they had their own chefs and artisans um, that worked within the monastery. So I guess uh, a bit of their legacy has been left. And Michele, uh, I suppose another very interesting story about uh, Florence as such is the, the history that involves Caterina di Medi uh, Medici or Medici. Yeah. How do, they, how do they actually say it? Uh, the Medici, yeah. The Medici, isn't it? Which was a noble family that ruled that kingdom for a long time. Now, um, in my research, uh, I think that Catherine married King Henry II. He came over from France. Yeah. And she was about 12 years of age. She was a very young queen and obviously was bursting with all this um, Florentine influence. And uh, I suppose when she went back to France, she took a lot of the influence with her um, because I often say it was the other way around. But uh, as Italians, we believe that the Italians in in influenced French cooking, yeah? Yeah. And the only thing the French apparently, apparently, was mayonnaise and bechamel. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's in the book, so I don't like the French would like to hear us saying that. <laughs> they but wouldn't be happy with that. They wouldn't be happy. But, uh, of course, what uh, the Italians brought over to uh, France were things like sorbets, uh, pastry, you know. Um, I'm just sort of thinking they, they, they sort of refined a lot of things. And most importantly, actually, the other thing we should say is that the Italians actually introduced forks yeah. As you know, they were eating with their fingers and the Italians actually introduced forks and they introduced glassware instead of using goblets. So that was a big, bringing a little bit of the elegance of a Florentine life. And it was pretty over the top, wasn't it? Yeah, for that time. For that time, absolutely. So, Michele, what's the uh, first dish we're going to be showing our viewers this evening? Uh, we're going to do fagioli al fiasco. Fagioli meaning um, beans? Beans, yeah. Is that beans, a fiasco? Uh, beans, yeah, beans is very important in, uh, in Tuscan food. Yes. Uh, exactly. Even the beans came uh, from America as well, mm -hmm. all thanks mm -hmm. to our friend Cristoforo. Really? Yes. And oh. um, with the Mexicans, with the tomatoes. Yeah. The Americans. Amazing. The beans. <laughs> now, first of all, you need uh, you need to drink a lot of wine, okay, and collect a lot of these bottles. So, Michele, how easy can we find these bottles? Are they easily found in Melbourne? I suppose some of the better uh, supermarkets, Italian supermarkets, Piedimonte, my local. Yeah, Piedimonte will have it. Yeah. And um, yes, they're not really popular in um, in good restaurants anymore. They used to be good in the no. long time ago. Do you know but, why? Uh, yeah. Because I always said they used to have the the Italians kept all the good quality wine, and all the yeah. inferior quality wine was sent out to Australia. Of course. <laughs> it just looked good but, on the table. But there was actually. Um, there was one of the first way of uh, bottling Chianti, so yes. there was uh, original. Yes. Mm. Uh, the only thing is the Italians uh, keep sending the bottle but sending a really bad quality product, like you said. That's a problem. So, and to remind our viewers, Chianti, of course, is in Tuscany, so we know we're still in the same area. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, so what do you do? You have to cut this out, mm -hmm. empty it, drink all the wine. <laughs> <laughs> if you can. Not before cooking. They stopped doing this in restaurants because chef, they just, you know. <laughs> they used to leave levers, you know, the levers used to be gone. Now, you have to pull it apart. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Secured by the bottom? Yeah. Okay. 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 Here we go. So here we got a bottle. Okay. Um, before you do this, you should sterilize the bottle, which is... Uh, How do we do that, Michele? Uh, you can boil it for 10 minutes and then uh, let it cool down in the water. And, mm -hmm. um, and what you do, 
you make sure you let it dry by itself, okay? You take it out, you don't go inside with the teeth out.